What's up, everyone, and welcome to this week's Cybersecurity Weekly, where we review the security events that happened in the last week. As always, I have broken the stories down in the timeline, and there is a list of stories with time markers in the description below, so you can click on any of those time markers to jump to any story that you want. If you find my work valuable, of course, I ask you to hit the like button and share this episode with anyone you know who can benefit from this information. Lastly, if you've not already, please also consider subscribing to my channel. Antivirus firm Bitdefender released a decryptor for the Megacortex ransomware, which can allow victims of the group to restore their data for free. The Megacortex ransomware first appeared on the threat landscape in May 2019 when it was spotted by security experts at Sophos. The experts noticed that in Megacortex attacks, other malware like Emotet and Qbot, aka Cakebot, were present in the same network. Since November 2019, Megacortex operators started adopting double extortion uh, tactics. The group typically asked ransoms between $20,000 and $5.8 million to receive a decryptor. In December 2019, the FBI issued a warning to the private industry of cyber attacks involving the Locker Gaga and Mega Cortex ransomware. Bitdefender researchers have developed uh, the decryptor with the support of Europol, the um, Zurich Public Prosecutor Office, and Cantonal Police, and research researchers from the No More Ransom Project. The tool is an executable that can be downloaded from Bitdefender servers. The decryptor also supports the scan entire system mode, which allows users to search for all encrypted files. The user guide released by the security firm strongly recommends users of maintaining the backup files option enabled. By checking the backup option, users will see both the encrypted and the decrypted files. They can also find a log describing decryption <clears throat> process in their temp Bitdefender log text folder. In case of encryption with version 2 to 4, please make sure the system contains the ransom note, e.g. readme.txt or dash readme.rtf, etc. For encryption with Mega Cortex version 1, the encrypted files have the .aes128 CTR extension appended. Please ensure the ransom note and TSV log file, e.g. Um, frax, whatever that is, created by the ransomware are present on the system. Reads an important note included in the manual provided with the tool. In September, the Zurich Public Prosecutor Office announced it was planning to release a decryptor after the seizure of decryption private keys from a threat actor who was arrested by Swiss authorities and that is facing hacking and money laundering charges. This analysis revealed numerous private keys from ransomware attacks. These keys enable damaged companies and institutions to restore data previously encrypted with the Locker Gaga or Mega Cortex malware. In cooperation with Europol, the No More Ransom project and the company Bitdefender, a tool is, or because of them, they created a tool that's provided, that supports the victims in decrypting Locker, uh, Locker Gaga. This is available at well, nomoransomware.org. Reads a press release published by the Zurich Public Prosecutor Office. Mega Cortex decryption tool will be released soon. Victims who are affected by attacks with the malicious programs mentioned are urgently requested to file a criminal complaint in their respective home country if they have not already done so. Qualys experts spotted a new malware campaign spreading a remote access trojan called BitRat using sensitive information stolen from a bank as a lure in phishing messages. BitRat is a relatively new threat advertised on underground marketplaces and forums since February 2021. It is offered for $20. The rat supports the following capabilities, or a list of capabilities. Of course, it's exfiltrating data. While investigating multiple lures for BitRat, the researchers discovered that a threat actor had hijacked the IT infrastructure of a Colombian cooperative bank and likely gained access to customers' data. Then, the attackers used lures containing sensitive data from the bank to trick victims into stealing the mall or installing the malware. The researchers discovered that the threat actors had access to a database containing four, I guess it's 4,180,777 records or somewhere thereabouts, rows of customer sensitive data, including cedula numbers or Colombian national IDs, email addresses, phone numbers, customer names, payment records, salary address, etc. The threat actors exported the data in weaponized Excel mall docs and used them in phishing emails crafted to trick recipients into opening the file, lure victims into opening some suspicious Excel attachments. <clears throat> Upon opening the file and enabling the macro, a second stage DLL payload is downloaded and executed. The second stage DLL uses various anti-debugging techniques. It retrieves and executes BitRat on the compromised host. The Excel contains a highly obfuscated macro that will drop an INF payload and execute it. The .inf, pay .inf payload is segmented into hundreds of arrays in the macro. The deobfuscation routine performs arithmetic operations on these arrays to rebuild the payload. 
The macro then writes the payload to temp and executes it via advpack.dll. Reads the analysis published by the experts. The .inf file contains a hex-encoded second-stage DLL payload, which is decoded via certutil, written to temp folder, and executed by run DLL32. The temp files are then deleted. The obfuscated bitrat loader samples were hosted on a GitHub repository that was created in mid-November 2022. The bitrat loader samples are obfuscated via DeepC. The experts reported that the bitrat sample is embedded into the loaders and is obfuscated via SmartAssembly. The loader decodes the binary and reflectively loads them. Commercial off-the-shelf rats have been evolving their methodology to spread and infect their victims, concludes the report. They have also increased the usage of legitimate infrastructures to host their payloads and defenders needed uh, to account for it, meaning GitHub, um, Bitbucket, and all of these other places where they're hosting their malicious files. The Canadian Copper Mountain Mining Corporation announced to have suffered a ransomware attack late on December 27, 2022, which impacted its operations. Copper Mountain flagship asset is the 75th percent or is 75 percent owned Copper Mountain Mine located in southern British Columbia near the town of Princeton. The Copper Mountain Mine produces approximately 100 million pounds of copper equivalent per year with a planned expansion to increase production to approximately 140 million pounds of copper equivalent uh, per year. The company quickly implemented its incident response procedures and has preventatively shut down the mill to evaluate the impact on its control system. Copper Mountain Mining Corporation, the, the company or uh, Copper Mountain, reports that the company IT systems at its Copper Mountain Mine and corporate office were subject to a ransomware attack late on December 27, 2022. The company quickly implemented its risk management systems and protocols in response to the attack. Read the announcement published by the company on its website. The company has isolated operations, switched to manual processes where possible, and the mill has been preventatively shut down to determine the effect on its control systems. The statement reveals that the company has isolated operations and switched to manual process where possible, like I just read. The mining firm notified the relevant authorities and are assisting it with the investigation. The good news is that the attack did not impact safety and did not cause environmental incidents. This time, the company has yet to share technical details about the attack and the family of ransomware that affected its systems. It's still unclear if there was a data breach. There have been no safety or environmental incidents as a result of the attack, as again, we said before. The, company main priority, main, the company's main priority is to continue to ensure safe operations and limit operational and financial impacts, concludes the statement. Cybersecurity researcher Sam Curry and his colleagues discovered many vulnerabilities in the vehicles manufactured by tens of, of car makers and services implemented uh, by vehicle solutions, meaning Ferrari, BMW, Porsche, and others. The vulnerabilities could have been exploited by threat actors to perform a broad range of malicious activities from unlocking cars to tracking them. The flaws discovered by the experts affected vehicles of popular brands including Kia, Honda, Infiniti, Nissan, Acura, Mercedes-Benz, Genesis, BMW, Rolls-Royce, Ferrari, Ford, Porsche, Toyota, Jaguar, Land Rover. The research team also discovered flaws in the services provided by Reviver, SiriusXM, and Spirion. The exploitation of some flaws gave the experts access to hundreds of Mercedes mission-critical internal applications via improperly configured SSO. An attacker could have also exploited them to achieve remote code execution on multiple systems. The flaws also allowed attackers to access the content of the memory of some systems, leading to the exposure of Mercedes employee customer PII, or personally identifying information. In the case of BMW and Rolls-Royce, experts had SSO vulnerabilities which allowed them to access any employee application as any employee. The experts were able to access to or were able to access internal dealer portals and retrieve sales documents for BMW by providing VIN numbers. The experts were also able to access any application locked behind SSO on behalf of any employee, including applications used by remote workers or dealerships. While testing BMW assets, we identified a custom SSO portal for employees and contractors of BMW. This was super interesting to us, as any vulnerabilities identified here could potentially allow an attacker to compromise any account connected to all of BMW assets. For instance, if a dealer wanted to access the dealer portal at a physical BMW dealership, they would have to authenticate through this portal. Additionally, this SSO portal was used to access internal tools and related DevOps infrastructure, reads the analysis published by Curry. To demonstrate the impact of the vulnerability, we simply Googled BMW dealer portal and used our account to access the dealer portal used by sales associates working at physical BMW and Rolls-Royce dealerships. Who? that's bad. Experts were also able to achieve a full vehicle takeover on Kia via a deprecated dealer portal. Some of the vulnerabilities discovered by the experts allowed the researchers to retrieve owner information, including the physical address. In other cases, the flaws allowed it to tracking vehicles. 
Ability to send, retrieve vehicle location, send vehicle commands, and retrieve customer information via vulnerabilities affecting the vehicle te uh, telemetric service reads the analysis related to the issues impacting Porsche. The experts also demonstrated how to exploit some flaws to access the Reviver license plate service and update any vehicle status to stolen, which updates the license plate and informs the authorities. That's pretty sneaky. CricketSocial.com is a social platform developed for the cricket community online. Cyber News discovered that a database used by the platform was left open online. It contains a huge trove of data. The social platform for the cricket community exposed over 100,000 entries of private customer data and credentials. The database, hosted by Amazon Web Services in the U.S., contained admin credentials and private customer data, including email, phone numbers, and names, hashed user passwords, dates, birth, and addresses. The experts noticed that most of the records in the database seemed to be test data. However, the experts discovered Discovered, it also includes personally identifiable information of legitimate site users. The data stored in the database includes posts, comments, number of file, number of likes, excuse me, and links to images kept on the AWS storage bucket. Even if all the information stored was test data, leaving data in plain text is a poignant indication of bad security practices being employed. That creates unnecessary risks for unsound practices creeping into the production environment if left unchecked, Cyber News, uh, Cyber News researchers said. The experts discovered that the database also exposed plain text credentials for a website administrator account, a piece of information that could allow an attacker to take over the platform. The storage of passwords in plain text is a bad practice that could event uh, that could give advantage or adv advantage threat actors while targeting an infrastructure. Experts also found a second open instance of the database owned by CricketSocial.com that contains all the same types of information found in the first one. However, the second database was much smaller, likely because it was part of a development and quality assurance environment. Experts warned that threat actors can use multiple tools to distinguish test data from real ones. Even if all the information stored was test data, again, leaving it in plain, in plain text is a poignant indication of bad security practices, blah, blah, blah. This seems like it's been read to it. Information can be, social, can be sold for substantial amounts of money. Threat actors could later use this information for identity theft or spam. So a data leak containing email addresses for 235 million Twitter users has been published on a popular hacker forum. Many experts have... Um, immediately analyzed it and confirmed the authentic authenticity of many of the entries in the huge leaked archive. At the end of July, a threat actor leaked data of 5.4 million Twitter accounts that were obtained by exploiting a new or a now fixed vulnerability in the popular social media platform. In January, a report published on hacker on hacker claimed on hacker on the forum claimed the discovery of the vulnerability that can be exploited by an attacker to find a Twitter account by the associated phone number, email, even if the user has opted to prevent this in the privacy options. The vulnerability was exploited by multiple threat actors to scrape Twitter user profiles containing both private phone numbers and email addresses and public data. Then these scraped data were offered on various online cybercrime marketplaces. In August, Twitter confirmed that the data breach was caused by the now patched zero day flaw submitted by the researcher Zironovsky uh, via bug bounty platform HackerOne, and that he received a whopping $5,040 bounty. In November, data from 5.4 million Twitter users were um, obtained from the multiple threat actors and combined with data from other breaches were available online. In December, Another Twitter data leak made the headlines. A threat actor obtained data of 400 million Twitter users and attempted to sell it. The seller claimed the database is private. He provided a sample of 1,000 accounts as proof of claims, which included the private information of prominent users such as Donald Trump Jr., Brian Krebs, and many more. The settler, who is a member of a popular data breach forum, claimed the data was scraped via a vulnerability. The database includes emails and phone numbers of celebrities, politicians, companies, normal users, and a lot of OG and special usernames. Now, a threat actor published an archive containing the uh, data of 235 million users on breach forms that can be downloaded for eight credits. Believe the computer reported that unlike previously leaked data collected uh, using this Twitter API flaw, this data leak does not indicate whether an account is verified. Experts warn that the leaked data can be used by threat actors to target the users of the platforms. Of course they can. Like, we need to be warned about that. Hackers will use the new leaked database in order to, one, target crypto Twitter accounts like Ethereum in the name and other methods, two, hack into high profile accounts, followed um, follower count or otherwise, three, hack into OG accounts with good usernames, four, hack into political accounts, five, dox anonymous accounts with uh, that didn't use a dedicated email for Twitter. It goes without saying that agencies around the world will use this database as well to further harm our privacy, reported Alan Gall, founder of Hudson Rock. 
cybersecurity vendor Fortinet addressed several vulnerabilities impacting its products. The Compappy, or the company, whatever that spelling mistake, or however that got in there. The company also warned, Combappy? All right, the company also warned customers of a high severity command injection flaw tracked to CVE 2022-39947 with a CVSS score of 8.6, affecting the application delivery controller 4080C. The CVE 2022-39947 flaw is an improper neutralization of special elements used in an OS command vulnerability in 4080C. It can potentially lead to arbitrary code execution via specifically crafted HTTP requests. An improper neutralization of special elements used in an OS command vulnerability with, a C with the CWE78 in 40 ADC may allow an authenticated attacker with access to the web GUI to execute unauthorized code or commands via specifically crafted HTTP requests. Read the advisory published by the vendor. 40 ADC version 7.0.0 through 7.0.2, 40 ADC version 6.2.0 through 6.2.3, 40 ADC th version 6.1.0 through uh, 6.1.6, and these other versions. Are affected. The flaw was discovered internally and reported by Gwendol Gugniod, a Fortinet product security team. The vendor also addressed several high severity command injection vulnerabilities in Forti Tester, tracked to CV 2022 35845 with CVSS score of 7.6, that may allow an authenticated attacker to execute arbitrary commands in the underlying shell. Multiple improper neutralization of special elements used in the OS command um, or OS command injection. Vulnerabilities with CW78 in 40 tester may allow an, uh, an authenticated attacker to execute arbitrary commands in the underlying shell, reads the advisory. 40 testers version 7.1.0, 40 testers version 7.0, all versions of 40 tester version 4.0.0 through 4.2.0, and these other versions are affected. The flaws were internally again discovered and reported by Wilfred Jechow of the Fortinet product security team. The vendor did not warn of active exploitation of those vulnerabilities. So there was an original post on cybernews.com. Um, Cybernews research team discovered that the AI-based chatbot ChatGBT, a recently launched platform that caught the online community attention, could provide hackers with step-by-step -step instructions on how to hack websites. As if they need ChatGPT for that. It's, it's all over YouTube, Twitter, anywhere you want to go. Anyway, cyber news researchers warned that AI chatbot, while fun to experiment with, might also be dangerous since it is able to give detailed advice on exploiting any vulnerability. Artificial intelligence has been stirring the imagination of the tech industry thinkers and popular culture for decades. Machine learning technologies that can automatically create text, videos, photos, and other media are booming in the tech sphere as investors pour billions of dollars into the field. While AI opens immense possibilities to assist humans, the critics stress the potential dangers of creating an algorithm that outperforms human capabilities and which could slip out of the control. Sci-fi's inspired ap apocalyptic scenarios when AI is taking over the Earth are still unlikely. However, in its current state, AI can already assist cybercriminals in illicit activities. ChatGPT, or Generative Pre-Trained Transformer, is the newest development in the AI field, created by research company OpenAI, led by Sam Altman and backed by Microsoft, Elon Musk, LinkedIn, co-founder Reid um, Hoffman, and Kozla Ventures. The AI chatbot can conduct conversations with people mimicking various writing styles. The text created by ChatGPT is far more imaginative and complex than that of previously built Silicon Valley chatbots. It was trained on an enormous amount of text data obtained from the web, archive books, and Wikipedia. Within five days after the launch, more than one million people had signed up to test the technology. The social media was flooded with user queries and the AI responses creating poems, plotting movies, copywriting, providing useful tips for losing weight on, or relationship. Losing relationships? Okay. Helping with creative brainstorming, studying plagiarizing, and even programming. OpenAI states that the ChatGPT model can answer follow-up questions, challenge incorrect premises, reject inappropriate queries, and admit its own mistakes. Our research team tried using ChatGPT to help them find a website vulnerability. Researchers asked questions and followed the guidance of AI, trying to check if the chatbot could provide a step-by-step -step guide on exploiting the vulnerability. Researchers used the Hack the Box cybersecurity training platform for their experiment. The platform provides a virtual training environment and is widely used by cybersecurity specialists, students, and companies to improve hacking skills. The Data Protection Commission concluded two inquiries into the data processing operations of Meta Platforms Ireland Limited, Meta Ireland, over the delivery of its Facebook and Instagram services. DPC fined Meta Platforms a total of 390 million euro, roughly 414 million dollars. 
final decisions have now been made by the DPC, in which it has fined Meta Ireland $210 million for breaches of the GDPR relating to its Facebook services and $180 million for breaches in relation to its Instagram service, reads the announcement published by DPC. Meta Ireland has also been directed to bring its data processing operations into compliance within a period of three months. The inquiries, are, inquiries were related to Facebook and Instagram services. One complaint was made by an Austrian data subject and was related to the data processing operations of Facebook, and the second one was made by a Belgian data subject in relation, re, relation to Instagram. Both complaints were made on the date on which the GDPR came into operation, on 20th of, 25th of May 2018. In advance of 25th of May of 2018, Meta Ireland had changed the terms of service for its Facebook and Instagram services. Meta Ireland considered that by accepting the updated terms of service, the users gave the company the consent to process their data to deliver its Facebook and Instagram services, including the provision of personalized services and behavioral advertising. Following a consultation process, it became clear that a consensus could not be reached. Consistent with its obligations under the GDPR, the DPC next referred the points in dispute to the European Data Protection Board, or EDBP, or P PB, uh, continues the DPC. The final decisions adopted by the DPC on the 31st of December 2022 reflect the EDPB binding determinations as set out above. Accordingly, the DPC decisions include findings that Meta Ireland is not entitled to rely on the contract legal basis in connection with the delivery of behavioral advertising as part of its Facebook and Instagram services, and that its processing of users' data to date in purported reliance on the contract legal basis amounts to a contravention of Article 6 six of the GDPR. Um, so whatever, the impact on revenue and social media giant is whatever. Is that really going to affect meta? I don't think so. So it is important to note that these decisions do not prevent personalized advertising on the platform. The decisions relate only to which legal basis Meta uses when offering certain advertising. Advertisers can continue to use their platform to reach potential customers, grow their business, and create new markets, states Meta. The decisions also do not mandate the use of consent, uh, the use of consent, another available legal basis under GDPR for this processing. I'm not really sure what that says, but... Whatever. Microsoft Security Threat Intelligence Team warns of four different ransomware families, Key Ranger, File Coder, Mac Ransom, and Evil Quest, that impact Apple Mac OS systems. The initial vector in attacks involving Mac ransomware typically relies on user-assisted methods, such as downloading and running fake or weaponized applications. The ransomware can also be delivered as a second-stage payload dropper or part of a supply chain attack. The experts state that malware creators abuse legitimate functionalities and implement various techniques to exploit vulnerabilities, evade defenses, or trick users into affecting their devices. One of the most important capabilities of ransomware is the capability of targeting specific files to encrypt. Microsoft researchers observed various techniques used by ransomware families to enumerate files and directories on Mac. File Coder and Mac Ransom use the Linux Find utility to search for selected files to encrypt. The File Coder Ransomware, for example, searches for the slash users and slash volumes directories for invoking and find at the find command twice, using different paths to enumerate the exclude and excluding the README file while searching the slash users path. The researchers reported that KeyRanger and EvilQuest used a sequence of open directory, read directory, and closed directory library functions to get the list of files. The KeyRanger, Mac, Mac Ransom, and EvilQuest ransomware families utilize a combination of hardware and software-based checks to avoid being executed in a virtual environment for analysis and debugging purposes. Hardware-based checks include checking a device hardware model, which is Mac ransomware, checking the logical and physical processes of a device, again, Mac ransom, um, checking the Mac OUI of the device, EvilQuest, and checking the device CPU count and memory size of EvilQuest. Code-related checks include delayed execution for KeyRanger, PT deny attach, Ptrace, for an anti-debugging trick that prevents debuggers from attaching to the current malware process, EvilQuest and Mac Ransom, Ptrace flag to check whether malware is running debugged, or is being debugged, excuse me, EvilQuest, and time-based check. Persistence is maintained by creating launch agents or launch daemons or using kernel queues. The ransomware families um, that were analyzed often share similar anti-analysis and persistence techniques. However, these same ransomware families differ in encryption logic. Some use AES-RSA encryptions, while others use system utilities, XOR routine, or custom encryption logic to encrypt files. These encryption methods range from in-place modification to creating a new file while deleting the original one, reads the uh, analysis published by Microsoft. Common among the 
ransomware observed is adding a new extension or simply encrypting the file without adding any new one and of course attacking Mac. The ASEC analysis team recently discovered that a Linux malware developed with a shell uh, script compiler that threat actors use to install CoinMiner. The experts believe attackers initially compromised targeted devices through a dictionary attack on poorly protected Linux SSH servers. Then they installed multiple malware on the target system, including the SHG downloader, XM rig coin miner, and a Perl based DDoS IRC bot. The shell script compiler is used to convert bash shell scripts into an elf or executable and linkable format. The following is a, oh, the, they listed a decoded bash shell script of SHG malware reported by a client company that suffered an infiltration attack. It downloads and runs files from external sources. And based on the fact that XM Red Coin Miner is downloaded and installed from the currently available address, it is assumed to be a coin miner downloader, reads the report published by ASCC. The SSH downloader subsequently proceeds to fetch the XM rig miner software to mine cryptocurrency with the IRC bot capable of establishing connections with a remote server to fetch commands for, for mounting distributed denial of service attacks. The SS, SHC downloader malware downloads a compressed file from an external source to user local games and executes the run file. The compressed file contains the XM rig coin miner malware along with a config.json with the mining pool URL and the run script. As the config.json file containing the configuration data exists in the same path, the configuration does not need to be transmitted when XMRG is executed. However, examining the run script sh uh, shown uh, reveals that it transmits slightly different configuration data to config.json before executing XMRG, continues the report. The researchers also found a similar SHC downloader malware uploaded on VirusTotal. All the samples analyzed by the researchers were uploaded to VirusTotal from Korea. A circumstance suggests that the attackers or the attacks focus on South Korea. Typical attacks that target Linux SSH servers include brute force attacks and dictionary attacks on systems where account credentials are poorly managed. Because of this, administrators should use passwords that are difficult to guess for their accounts and change them periodically to protect the Linux server from brute force attacks and dictionary attacks and update to the latest patch to prevent vulnerability attacks, concludes the report. Administrators should also use security programs such as firewalls for servers accessible from outside to restrict access to it by attackers. Finally, version 3 should should be uh, updated to the latest version so that malware infection can be prevented. Now, taking into account that this is predominantly South Korea being attacked and other stories that you may recall me reviewing in the past showing how North Korea is continuously trying to expand and increase their crypto, um, maybe this is a North Korea attacker, who knows? Uh, now, the St. George Recovery Hospital in Botofani in northeastern Romania was hit by a ransomware attack in December that is still impacting medical operations. The hospital is not able to report the services performed in December 2022, and for this reason, it cannot receive payment for the medical services provided. The threat actors demanded a ransom of three Bitcoin to decrypt the data on the infected systems. It seems that the attackers abused a remote connection used before maintenance purpose uh, by a third-party service provider. The attack is similar to the one in the summer 2019 when four other hospitals in Romania were targeted. The hackers apparently got through by using a remote connection accessed by one of the maintenance companies, reported the web website Romania Insider. The hackers entered the system and encrypted a December database. After that, they left a message in English asking for a ransom of three Bitcoin or approximately $46,400. According to the media outlet, the attack was sophisticated and both the Romanian Dir Directorate for Investigating Organized Crime and Terrorism, Dicot, and a Romanian antivirus firm, Bitdefender, were not able to decrypt the files. Ooh. We have already notified the National Directorate of Cybersecurity and Dicot. An investigation has been launched and we are waiting to see what happens. I cannot say more at the moment. It is certain that from Monday we hope to resume medical activity at normal capacity, said... Uh, whatever that doctor's name is, the manager of the recovery hospital. In 2019, the other four um, hospitals in Romania suffered the ransomware attacks that were attributed to the Phobos extortion group. Taiwanese NAS maker Synology published two new critical advisories in December. The first advisory is related to the most severe vulnerability addressed by the company, which is a critical out-of-bounds write issue tracked to CVE 2022-43931 with the CVS 3 base score of 10. 
The vulnerability resides in the remote desktop functionality of Synology VPN Plus Server. Before 1.4.3-0534 and 1.4.4-0635, a remote attacker can exploit the flaw to execute arbitrary commands via unspecified vectors. Out of bands, write vulnerability and remote desktop functionality in Synology VPN Plus Server before 1.4. 0.3-0534 and the 1.4.4 version allows remote attackers to execute arbitrary commands via unspecified vectors. Raise the advisory published by the company. The second advisory addressed multiple vulnerabilities impacting Synology Router Manager. The Router Manager is the operating system that powers every Synology router. An attacker can trigger the flaws to execute arbitrary commands, cause a denial of service condition, or read arbitrary files. Multiple vulnerabilities allow remote attackers to execute arbitrary commands, conduct denial of service attacks, or read arbitrary files via a susceptible version of Synology Router Manager, reads the advisor. It is likely that the exploits for the above flaws were demonstrated during the Pawn to Own Toronto 2022 and reported through Trend Micro Zero Day Initiative. The researchers Gaurav Barre earned $20,000 for demonstrating a command injection attack against the WAN interface of a Synology RT6600AX router. CompuTest earned $5,000 for demonstrating a command injection root shell exploit targeting the LAN interface of, a, of the same uh, router. The enterprise collaboration platform Slack has announced to have suffered a security breach. Threat actors have stolen some of its private source code repositories. The company pointed out that its customers were not affected yet we've reached let's see when a fake version of slack comes out we recently became aware of a security issue involving unauthorized access to a subset of slack code repositories reads the security update published by slack on december 29 2022 we were notified of suspicious activity on our github account upon investigation we discovered that a limited number of slack employee tokens were stolen and misused to gain access to our externally hosted github repository our investigation also revealed that the threat actor downloaded private code repositories on december 27th slack learned of the suspicious Suspicious activity on December 29th and launched an investigation into the incident. The investigation revealed that attackers have stolen a limited number of employee tokens and used again them to gain access to their externally hosted GitHub repository. The company downloaded private code repositories on December 27th. Slack pointed out that the accessed repositories did not contain primary code base. In response to the incident, the company immediately invalidated the stolen tokens and began investigating the potential impact on its customers. Our current findings show that the threat actor did not access other areas of Slack environment, including the production environment, and they did not access other Slack resources or customer data. There was no impact to our code or services, and we have also rotated all relevant credentials as a precaution, continues the update. Slack added that threat actors did not exploit any vulnerability in its systems to achieve unauthorized access. The investigation is still ongoing. Wabtec Corporation is an American company formed by the merger of the Westinghouse Air Brake Company and Motive Power Industries Corporation in 1999, a sleeper company. It manufactures, um, it manufactures products for locomotives, freight cars, and passenger transit vehicles and builds new locomotives up to 6,000 horsepower. The company powers approximately 25 employees, approximately 25,000 people, and has 50 plants all over the world. According to a statement published by WabTac, threat actors breached the company network and affected internal systems as early as March 15th, 2022. The unusual activity was detected by the company on June 26th. Uh, then the rail giant launched an investigation into the security incident. The forensic investigation did reveal that certain systems containing sensitive information were subject to unauthorized access and that a certain amount of data was taken from the WabTac environment on June 26, 2022. The information was later posted to the Threat Actor leak site. On November 23, 2022, WabTac, with the assistance of data review specialists, determined that personal information was contained within the impacted files. Reads the announcement published by WabTac Corporation. On December 30th, 2022, WabTech began notifying affected individuals per relevant regulations and a formal letter to let them know their data was involved. The company never mentioned the nature of the attack in the announcement. It only stated that the forensic investigation revealed that certain systems containing sensitive information were subject to unauthorized access and that a certain amount of data was exploitation on June 26, 2022. The only Reference to an extortion attack is the confirmation that the stolen data was later posted to the Threat Actor Leak site, which is a site used by ransomware groups and extortion gangs to announce the availability of stolen data from the victims. On November 23, 2022, WebTech determined that personal information was again contained within the files exfiltrated by the attackers. Compromised information varies from individual and includes a combination of the following data elements. First and last name, date of birth, non-U.S. national ID number, non-U.S. social security insurance number or fiscal code, passport number, IP address, 
address, employee note, identification number, USCIS or alien registration number, NHS, National Health Service number, UK medical or from the UK, medical record, health insurance information, photograph, gender or gender identity, salary, social security number, financial account information, payment card information, account username and password, biometric information, race and ethnicity, criminal conviction or offense, sexual orientation and life religious beliefs, and union affiliation. So they got everything. Zoho is urging its customers to address a critical SQL injection vulnerability track to CVE 2022-47523 that affects multiple managed engine products. This security advisory is to let you know that a high severity vulnerability was detected in Managed Engine Password Manager Pro, read the advisory published by Zoho. And a, a SQL injection vulnerability, CVE 2022-47523, Five two three was discovered in Password Manager Pro. An attacker can trigger this vulnerability to execute customers' queries and access the database records using the vulnerable request. The vendor addressed the flaw by adding proper validation and escaping special characters. We identified a SQL injection vulnerability, again, the CVE 2022-47523, in our internal framework that would grant access to all the Password Manager Pro users to the backend database. It has now been fixed, Zoho added. In September, the U.S. Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency added a security flaw in Zoho Managed Engine Track to CVE 2022-35405 with a CVSS score of 9.8 to its known exploited vulnerabilities catalog. The CVE 2022-35405 flaw is a remote code execution vulnerability that impacts Managed Engine, PAM360, Password Manager Pro, again, and Access Manager Plus. And that's the news. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe if you haven't already, and smash the bell if you haven't already, and I'll see you on the next episode. Take care.